So, you have started your first job, but before you start dreaming of your first sale, let me share some wisdom that could save you from some serious headaches. As someone who's been through the Wukong, I've seen plenty of newbies stumble into the same traps, and therefore think of this guide as your personal roadmap to avoiding the most common pitfalls that can turn your e-commerce dream into a nightmare. Now let's dive in. I'm gonna show you 9 most common rookie mistakes to avoid when starting a WooCommerce store. But before I do that, I have a small announcement to make, and that is... Today's video is brought to you by Breakdance, the modern visual website builder for WordPress. It's easy for beginners to learn, and powerful enough for the most advanced professionals. Breakdance is loaded with features, including a premium pre-made template library, a robust form builder, AI content writing capabilities, a versatile pop-up builder, and seamless WooCommerce integration. Whether you're just starting your WordPress journey, or you're a seasoned pro looking for a better builder for your agency, now is the perfect time to build better websites with Breakdance. Try it today and experience the Breakdance difference. Okay, now let's talk about the most common mistakes, and first of those is that users tend to ignore their site speed. For example, here is a result from one of the webshops I recently visited, and as you see, the load time for this site is 7.64 seconds. Page size is 6.6 .6 megabytes. And now you may ask, why is that important? Well, there has been a lot of studies about what increases or decreases your page abandonment. And one of the most important things is site speed. As you see from the graph on the screen, page abandonment is only 8% if the site loads within two seconds and it increases with every second. It's already 33% if the site loads in eight seconds and 38% if it's 10 seconds. And this leads me to the mistake number two, which is user tend to install so many plugins that sometimes I almost cry when I see the list. For example, as you see from this site, it has so many stuff going on in the dashboard. If you log in, you're so confused about all the notifications on the screen and all this clutter comes from the plugins you have installed. It asks to claim the gift. Let's remind it us later. There is a Monster Insights Analytics plugin, although there is also a site kit from Google, visible, some kind of element or data updater, asks something. Oh, and now the site crashed. Ah, oh, come on, guys. Now, if you scroll down, then there are confettis blowing on, some kind of stupid announcement. And if you go to the plugins page, you have to scroll down to see that it has four active plugins. And if you dive in, you'll see first security plugin, second security plugin, third security plugin. Let's scroll up. What else do we see here? First contact form plugin, second contact form plugin with pro add on, third contact form plugin. Oh God, what else? We'll see one, two, three, four, five. Elementor related plugins, one, two, three slider plugins, and so on. Now you may say it doesn't happen, but I assure you that it happens more than you know. And usually it happens in a way that user builds the site and thinks, oh, I need a good slider plugin. What shall I do? Well, let's go to the plugins. I'm going to add a new plugin. I'm going to search for slider. Oh, but there are so many of those. Let's test Smart Lighter. Well, it doesn't work. Let's test another one. Well, it doesn't work. Let's test third one. Well, I'm going to use that one here. Now what happens is that since you activated all the plugins, it means that it adds all sorts of clutter to your site. The site beats is slow. For example, I'm currently in my local machine. But if I go to the dashboard, open up my performance analyzer Chrome extension, then I'll see that the page loads 239 requests and the loading time is 6.1 seconds. And this is only for this dashboard here. If I go to the front page and open up my performance analyzer extension, then I'll see that the loading time is almost 5 seconds and it loads 190 requests. What should you do in these occasions is that go to the plugins, take a look at the installed plugins, and deactivate and delete all the ones you don't use. For example, I'm going to select all the ones I don't use. Then I'm going to deactivate those. Now I have only 15 active plugins. Next, I'm going to select all the plugins I deactivated. I'm going to delete those. 
Now when I go to the dashboard, open up my performance analyzer, you'll see that the loading time is 1.8 seconds and if I go to the front end, refresh the page, you'll see the loading time is 1.2 seconds, 112 requests and for the dashboard there's 130 requests. This is why you should keep an eye on all the plugins you install and use. Okay, let's move to the next rookie mistake. And this one is related to the product categories. And what I mean by that is, let's go to the categories, WooCommerce categories. I'm gonna add a category, for example, computers, add a new category. Next, I'm gonna add laptops, select parent category computers, add new category and done. Next, I'm gonna go to the products. I'm gonna add a new product, for example, MacBook Air. I'm gonna add it to the category laptops. Let's upload a product image, add a description and the price, publish. And now when I go to the shop, open up computers, you'll see there is no product visible, but there is a only one category. I have to click once more to see only one product. So the mistake is that there is no point for you to display it in a way like that, that there is a category I have to click to open up the subcategory. Instead, go to the customizer, open up your WooCommerce archive settings. There is a product catalog and now category display, select as show products. You can also overwrite it. For example, you may have categories that have a lot of products. So go to the products categories. You can override it, for example, for the boots, open it up and you'll see there is a display type, choose whether to display products, subcategories or both. But once again, if there are only few products, then it would be wise to display all them here. This way, your user doesn't have to click so much. So yeah, group your products into clear logical categories so buyers can quickly find what they need. Now, since we're already messing with the products, let's move to the next mistake. And this time let's open up the product itself. Let's take a look at the image and you'll see for some reason the image is really small. Let's open it up. Let's take a look at the image and you'll see the size for this image is only 300 by 300 pixels. It's too small. Every picture tells a story. So upload nice images instead of this. I'm going to upload 1500 by 1500 pixels large image update it. Let's view the product. And there you go. Much better. One more thing to point out is that if your WooCommerce shop has an image zoom activated, then if you have a good image, then there is something to zoom here. For example, let's revert to the previous image, update it. This time it's the 300 by 300 pixels. As you see, the zoom doesn't work because there is nothing to zoom here. Now, how do you know what is the minimum image size you have to upload? Well, let's inspect it. And you'll see the minimum image size is 472 by 472. It has to be at least a bit bigger than this to cover this area without getting blurry. Also, if you go to the customizer, open up your WooCommerce settings, then depending on your team, the image size placement may be in a different places. For my team, it's under the product archives, card options, product image. And you'll see there is an image size image ratio and other settings here. These settings are not available for all the teams, but nevertheless, never upload images that are smaller than this area here. Now pay attention though, there is another mistake. And this time it means when I go to the media library, if I open up one of the images, for example, this one here, then I'll see that the file size for this image is one megabyte. And this means that user has uploaded it without compressing it. And most likely they download it from the image stock site, uploaded it as it is. And as a result, one more time, it slows down your site. So pay attention to upload awesome images, but don't make them larger than they should be. Next one, let's go back to the product itself. And you'll see that there is a so-called description and no other information down below here. I understand that writing the good description may take time, but if the users come to your shop, they need to understand what is it you're selling. So generic, boring product description won't cut it. You have to write engaging, detailed description that answer potential questions. If the users land to your site, they have three questions. 
First question is, is it the correct place I wanted to land? Second question is, what can I do here? And third, why should I buy from this shop and not from the other shop I visited earlier? So, help your customers visualize using your product and write engaging detailed description that answer potential questions and then you're good to go. Before I proceed with the video, don't forget to smash that like button down below here. It means a lot to me and it also helps my channel. So, I would appreciate your help. Now, when this is out of the way, let's move to the next rookie mistake. And that is, let's add something to the cart, go to the checkout page. And now, one of the most common mistakes is that the checkout page is too complicated. Nothing kills sales faster than a checkout that feels like filling out a tax form. So, keep it simple. If I sell only to one or a few countries, then there is no need for this list of all the countries of the world. Instead, go to the settings, selling locations, select sell to specific countries, select your countries here, save it, refresh it, and done. It's already much better. If you don't need company name, then hide it. If you don't need phone or town or postcodes, then remove those fields. If you want to know how to remove checkout fields or reorder them, then I have made a separate video about it. So I'm going to put the link to this video on the video description so you can take a look at it. But yeah, make your checkout page easy to use and make sure the process is as smooth as butter. Now, since we're already messing with the checkout page, let's move to the next rookie mistake. And that is the shipping policies or shipping conditions are not clear. For this site, it's simple, whether it's local pickup or the courier. But take a look what happens if I change the country. This is for Estonia, but if I choose Sweden, there are no shipping options available. Please ensure that your address has been entered correctly. And now there is a confusement. I live in Sweden. What should I enter here? Why there are no shipping options available? Why is there a Sweden available as a country if there are no shipping options? And this happens because you didn't add any shipping methods to the country. There are shipping methods for Estonia, Finland and USA. But you forget to add shipping methods to other countries. So let's add a zone, add a name, choose a country, add shipping method, for example, flat rate, add the name courier, cost, create and save, refresh the page, and there it is, shipping for this country. Next one, depending on your hosting, it may happen that your hosting solution doesn't provide you a free backups or they tend to offer backups only for a couple of days. So to be sure if something goes wrong, you won't lose everything. I suggest you to use a backup plugin and schedule regular backups and keep uh, copies offsite. I have made also a separate video about this solution. So I'm going to put the link to this video also in the description. But short tutorial, go to the plugins, add new plugin, search for WP Vivid, install and activate it. It sits up here, go to the backup and restore. There is a schedule, enable schedule backups, daily, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, or every 12 hours. Choose what to backup, save it. Under the settings, choose how many backups you would like to be retained. Under the remote storage, connect your site either with Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft, Amazon, Digital Ocean, and so on. Set it up and you're done. If you need to restore your site, then there is a just a restore link here. Nothing complicated. I have to say that this plugin has saved my life a couple of times, especially if something happens after the plugin updates or so. Okay, last one. What you see here is my go-to team. It's called Ploxy. It allows me to create wish lists, compare lists, drawer shopping carts pop-up cards and so on and so forth. It has so many WooCommerce related features that I have made a separate video about all the features it has. Now the mistake I'm talking about is that if you're a rookie then you most likely tend to pick a team that looks good but doesn't work smoothly with WooCommerce. And where do you look for the teams? You go to the team forest, open up an e-commerce site, you'll see, ooh, there's a nice site for me. I like it a lot. 
Now you'll buy it and you don't pay attention that it has only 131 sales. Most likely year or two after that, the creator is not motivated to update it and you'll stuck. Also, those Team Forest teams tend to be so cluttered with different slider and elementer and so on plugins that it's a headache to use them. Just as an example, take a look. I'm going to go to the appearance customizer and this is the Ploxy team I'm using. It's simple to use. Open up. There's my header. If I need to change something, let's just drag and drop and done. And here's another one from the Team Forest. This is the options panel. So where's the header? There it is. Okay, header background image. Okay, I have to upload it here. But header styling, what is the styling? If I change the color, I don't see what happens over there. Bad, bad, bad. I don't like it at all. So before you start with your WooCommerce site, do your homework and pick a team that clearly states that it works well with WooCommerce. Check the reviews and see if others had good experiences with the team. Most likely you're going to use this team for years, so it has to be the team that will be developed and supported for the years to come. Starting a WooCommerce store doesn't have to be a struggle. Be mindful about your site speed and security and offering the right details at the right time. Don't overlook small steps like adding product categories and related items as they help shoppers find what they want. And finally, test everything before launch and keep regular backups, just in case. Now, as I mentioned, Ploxy has been my go-to team for the last three years. Recently, I have made a separate video about top 9 new Ploxy team features released this year. This video is on the screen right now, so be sure to take a look at it next. In the meantime, take care.